Hello, everybody. I hope you all are keeping well and fine. I need the Mishra. Welcome you to the class of Indian society. So uh, as in our last class, we have discussed on Indian diversity, right? That how India is diverse. And yet here uh, we all are united, yet we are one. And what are the uh, issues which poses uh, threats towards our diversity and yet our unity as well? And uh, as I could see uh, your uh, mains question paper, there were n number of questions on diversity, that what are the uh, uh, issues, what are the uh, factors responsible towards the threat of unity. And there was yet another question that from um, uh, right from Jammu and Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is one, substantiate. And there are various kinds of questions related to this on diversity, which we have discussed in our last class. Now, moving forward, today I'm going to discuss with you uh, a very important issue which is being talked around today, you know, and it is a very important component uh, for everybody to understand this. That is today we are discussing women's role and women's organization. So particularly we are going to talk about that how women are important and what are their significant roles right from the uh, uh, historical period, right from antiquity, right? So, uh, and um, how and why these issues have cropped up, why it is important to understand women's role. Why, uh, why were they marginalized? Why were they invisible? And why such issues, you know, are important for us to understand so that this society is, uh, is, is just, uh, the society is equitable for everybody. So particularly, we are going to understand the issues of gender, right? And in this, we'll be discussing uh, the difference between sex and gender, then uh, what are the issues, uh, which has actually led to a quote unquote feminist movement. So the waves of feminism, then women's organization, role of women, right? From various phases, what are the issues and what are the international organizations which are working towards it? The various important, very important and cardinal frameworks related to women's role and women's organization and towards the upliftment of women, the uh, SDG roles, sustainable development goals, and and, and a kind of perspective we are going to understand today that how you're going to you know, take such questions based on women's issue and women's role if it is asked in your mains paper, right? So a very, very important and very, very interesting, uh, I would uh, say that uh, uh, the topic is going to be for today's discussion. So I'll just quickly share so that you are able to see it. <clears throat> Right, so you can see that today we are going to uh, look into the role of women and women's organization. So the point is that uh, first you need to understand that uh, why do we need to discuss, you know, a role of women and women's organization. So the first and very foremost issue to discuss on the role of women and women's organization role of women specifically, that though the women, uh, the role of women have been very, very significant in every phases of our uh, development and in every phases of historical development, but yet they have been invisible. So this invisibility, the invisibility of their role has, you know, uh, somewhere led to the incorporation of this very important uh, segment in your syllabus of Indian society. So society, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's incomplete unless, until and unless you do not understand and you do not give the due recognition to each member of this society, to each section of the society, right? So in that we are going to understand. So uh, if I say, uh, you know, when I talk about, when I say women, or when I talk about, you have been, uh, you know, largely um, or commonly you have been able to uh, come across uh, with the statement gender, you know, sex and gender. So first and foremost, one has to clearly understand then what is the meaning of sex and what is the meaning of gender? You know, we need to understand 
uh, you know, that uh, sex is the biological attributes, the biological definition, you know, or the biological attributes through which we know any human being. That is what is sex, right? For example, if I say, you know, uh, my sexual identity is of a girl, that I'm a female, right? I'm a female. So my sexual under, uh, understanding of my sexual, uh, my, you know, identity is, is female, right? Similarly, for a boy, it is male. So this is the biological attribute. When I say biological attribute, it is the physiological construction of my body, you know, the certain organs which are being uh, bestowed on me, which have been given naturally to me, and by which I am a male or a female. So this is this uh, biological understanding. Yet another, a very important perspective, you know, versus this in contrast of the biological attributes to us is gender. Gender. So what is gender? You know, when I say in a very, um, uh, if I say, if I talk about in a very scholarly or in a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, research kind of uh, term, if I use, then I would be saying that gender, then gender is the social construction, which is largely understood that it's social construction of, of biological roles, you know. So gender is, is, is actually, when I say constructed, so it's the constructed term, the social construction, the constructed term, it's the constructed term. So when I say constructed, that means somebody must have, you know, given certain understanding to this term. So when I say certain given understanding to this term that it is being constructed in the society, that means you just understand in this way that male versus masculine, you know, or male, a biological understanding of a boy, of a, uh, of a boy is, ma is male, then the gender role is masculine. So a boy or a male has to be masculine so that to prove himself, you know, for example, you have to look macho, you have to show your anger, you have to be aggressive, you can't assist in your, you know, uh, a very feminine kind of role, you can't be very docile, you can't be very humble. So these are actually the attributes of what? Actually attributes of masculinity. So when I say that a, a male person is masculine, that means, or he is very masculine, that means I am talking about his gender. I am not talking about his sexual identity, that by sexual identity, he's a male. But when I talk about gender, then he is masculine. Similarly for a female. If a, if a, uh, when I'm talking about the sexual identity of, of any girl being female, then she has feminine quality. A feminine quality, oh, she's so pretty. She's so beautiful. She's so soft spoken. You know, she is so humble. So when you say such kind of uh, uh, attributes for or, or a kind of adjectives when you use for a particular uh, uh, a male or a female person, then you are using the gender words. So gender are gender is a socially constructed term. It's why it is socially constructed because it is constructed in the society. How it is constructed in the society? It is constructed through the process of socialization. So the term socialization is very important for you, for all of us to understand. That through the process of socialization, you know, the gender roles are given to girls and to boys. No, 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 you shouldn't cry. You're crying like a girl. When a boy cries, when a small boy, you know, he fights or cries when, when he's playing, you know, usually mothers are seen say, saying, are you a girl? Are you a girl that you're crying? So that means, you know, you, you don't have to exhibit the feminine character. A boy doesn't have to exhibit the feminine character. When I say this feminine character, this is what is actually I'm talking about, the gender. So here comes the base for inequality. Here comes the base for not giving due respect and due recognition to one section of the society that is women or even gender when I'm talking about it's gender we when we talk about gender you know that is also very important to understand that we understand in a very binary concept binary means two you know opposite 
girl, boy, girl, male, female, masculine, feminine, you know, but we have to bear this in mind and be very, very open that we have third gender also, you know, we have third gender also and we have to give them a due respect, a due recognition in our society. We all are human beings. We are divided on the basis of our gender roles. You know, as gender, on the basis of gender, we have, we are uh, being treated differently. We are being treated, you know, unequal. So here is the most important point we need to understand that these gender roles are given by us, by the society through the process of socialization. So socialization is a process of you know, what is socialization? Socialization is a process in which a child is being brought up in the society. A child, the way he or she is brought up in his or her family. So the way you bring up your child, you know, the way it's, it's that, it's, it's in the same way he or she will pick up, you know, the various uh, attributes, the various understanding towards uh, towards his or her various roles. So socialization is the process of bringing up your society, upbringing, you know, how you upbring your child. For example, uh, maybe in a, uh, in a family, you know, uh, more uh, preference or more advantages are given to a male child, to a boy. You know, a girl is, for example, there are n number of researches on this. When you see, when you go through it, you will find out that the girls uh, uh, in a family or a girl child in a family are sent to a very uh, are sent to government schools their uh, parents do not give much attention or do not give uh, uh, much preferences to towards the uh, towards the studies of a girl whereas the boy you know the boy goes to a very expensive private school you know and when it is being asked what is the, uh, uh, you know, the most significant point here to understand that when researchers have asked those girls that why are you going to a government school, you are going to a government school, and a boy is going to a private school, then those girls are, are uh, uh, you know, they, they are being brought up in such a way that they say, no, uh, my boy, my, my brother has to go in a private school, no, because uh, after all, he is the male member of our family and uh, he has to earn, you know, so he has to earn, he has to uh, get into a good job. So obviously my brother has to go in a good school, right? So such is the, um, such is the impact of bringing up, such is the impact of socialization on a girl's child as well, that they take it for granted or it is so shuttle that the girl even does not come to know about the various discriminatory practices even going in, the, in various families. In urban societies, these are gradually coming down, but still you will find that the, this gender difference is very, very shuttle and very, very glaring also, even on the public platforms, right? Even on the public platforms. So the point here that what uh, I am uh, making you to understand that why there is inequality in our society on the basis of our biological understanding. Because biological, biologically, a boy and a girl is different. Anatomically, the boy and a girl is different. But because of genders, because of gender roles, because of understandings, because of various attributes being associated with those anatomical understanding, with those biological understanding, you know, there has been inequality created in our society on the basis of gender. What that the, the biological differences are taken as cultural differences. The biological differences are being considered as a very natural differences, right? And it is also associated and those gender roles are also taken as a very natural differences. For example, the care work. The care work is associated with girls, with females, right? And it is considered as feminine characteristic, right? A girl has to be at home, or even if she is moving out in a public domain, she, after all, she has to look after her family. You know, she only has to take the sole responsibility of bringing a child, you know? when the child eats, how the child studies, you know, what is she studying, 
whether the whether the food has been given to the uh, to to the child or not or whatever you know these issues uh, and these roles are been given to women and they are given to women in a in such a way that it is considered very natural that girls are actually like that you know they are very caring they are, are come on girls are not many girls are not so caring right it is it is one emotional understanding it is one uh, 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 it, it, it is because of the factor of socialization the the way the girl has been brought up right even a boy these days boys uh, assist a lot in the household work they assist a lot they are taking they are also taking larger responsibility of families right but when boys do such kind of roles you know or uh, for example you know uh, uh when a boy is seen brooming the floor or cleaning the floor by a neighbor then the neighbors they say that oh see the boy is so good he is doing all household work so this household works which even a girl uh, does the same way you know and the girl is being also noticed cleaning the floor and cleaning the uh, 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 keeping the house absolutely arranged these are the things also a girl is doing but these roles will not be highlighted by those neighbors or by the third person you know but when a boy does such kind of roles or such kind of um, uh, uh, behavior is exhibited by a boy then it, it becomes highlighted why because those roles are associated actually with girls and not with boys so the point here you you need to understand that we need to bring change in our mindset and in our attitude why because we need to understand that there is a difference between sex and gender there is a difference between sex role and gender role sex role sex is, is, is the the sexual understanding the biological understanding the anatomical understanding is different as compared to gender roles gender roles are the constructed roles which are given to a girl or a boy through the process of socialization in her family in the society right so in order to understand the women's issue or in order to understand the the invisibility of women you know uh, i must uh, recommend all of you to read um, a sociology book of 11th and 12th specifically of 12th ncrt because when you go through uh, the ncrt it's a, it's a wonderfully written you know it's wonderfully written uh, book and the ncrt books of sociology specifically of class 12th 11th also but 12th i am talking about that it 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 very beautifully talks about the invisibility of women in farming also you know women have been uh, you know since ages they have been working on farms So, uh, and uh, they are very hard workers women laborers are largely seen on the uh, on the farms especially specifically when i talk about uh, rice or paddy field you will see that women you know working hard on the paddy field and we, there are various uh, there are uh, cultural uh, songs also they Mm, uh, the native songs also they they keep singing and uh, they used to sow those uh, uh, you know transplant those paddy the the rice saplings from one field to another so um, women have been the point here is the women have been working largely on the farm on the agricultural land but when you talk about farmer just say farmer you know the immediately the image which comes the concept which comes in your mind is of a man you know man may be tied a turban or wearing a dhoti simple chappal you know so the concept comes in your mind when you say farmer the concept comes in your mind of a man but the reality is that a woman is also a farmer you know they have been working on the field it's just that their due rights have not been given to them the land rights have not been given to women so that is why why it is not given to them because they have been largely seen with their gender roles they are always been associated with the gender roles you know you must have seen republic day parade this time so many women commandants you know they have been driving bicycle and uh, show, showing so many you know uh, uh, great moves in the sky so what are they doing they are breaking the gender roles 
so we have to break this gender a socially constructed identity which has been given to women so that is what we have to uh, understand right so because of this gender role because of this socially constructed understanding of women uh, you know the the roles of women the uh, the important contribution of women towards society has been so much invisible and that is what we need to understand and we need to talk about you know the way uh, i would you know further move the way uh, freedom is not given to us we have taken it we have struggled for it you know there has been phases of freedom struggle so the way we have taken our freedom in the same way one has to take the rights so right is not always easily given to anybody one has to struggle for it one has to fight for it so that is why today or uh, even in historical period in antique in uh, antiquity uh, when women have been seen fighting for their rights so that is why there has been various issues towards the women is struggle women's struggle as well now when i say about uh, uh gender roles or uh, masculine and feminine attributes then one has to understand the very structure of one society you know that patriarchy so uh, any uh, any discussion on gender would be incomplete if one does not talk about patriarchy pitri satta that is called in hindi patri pater is father and archy is dominance that means dominance of father kamla bhasin a very famous uh, feminist you know who recently passed away you must know him know her kamla bhasin her, uh, her uh, works you know and her works are remarkable and very simple to understand that why i am a girl you know so or uh, how i am a girl you know, uh, how i am being understood so her writings are very very simple she talks of a very uh, ground root and uh, or a grassroots reality you know so kamla basin has recently passed away so she has a very uh, in a very lucid and a very simple term talked about patriarchy you know patriarchy as i said rule rule of a father or in general term rule of men you know so uh, patriarchy is when uh, it is largely it, it it can be understood in this way that you know where there is a rule of men women are actually subjugated women are less dominant or they are not they are being dominated uh, they are being relegated to such roles which are not very important which are full of drudgery which are full of uh, which is boring which is very very hectic tiring so they have been given such because of this larger uh, structure patriarchal structure you know uh, there are various gender roles which are associated you also have to understand here moving forward before moving forward i must say that we just don't have to think in binary concept of gender rather than we also have to understand that there are male female and third gender also or um, to which there have been various struggle going on today as well right so moving forward <clears throat> i must here admit that uh, you know uh, a very famous um, um uh, our uh, uh, from where actually the issues of uh, you can say the uh, trace the issues of women we can say then fredrik engel you know a famous uh, sociologist or a companion of karl marx karl marx is read in economics and sociology everywhere he is he is relevant everywhere so similarly fredrik engel has actually you know he has talked about uh, origin of private property you know and uh, his book is the origin of family in private property origin of family private property and state in it came in 1886 right so he has actually you know largely talked about that um, how from uh, community life uh um, a nuclear family started originating or the concept of private property came into prominence and then the prominence of state so one can trace it from there right and uh, in that leo further when i move then there were various feminists for example gerda lerner 
or even uh, uh, you know those who have actually talked about um, performance of role that is gender roles you know so performance of roles they have actually talked talked about performative performativity so uh, they have talked about performativity and on the basis of which a girl and a boy or a male or a female is actually defined now when we talk about uh, let's come to uh, women's liberation movement now let let's come to women's movement now as i said that freedom is not been given to us we have taken it we have struggled for it we have fought for it in the same way women's movement has also been very uh, you know issue based movement now when you say movement what is a movement so first of all you need to understand that uh, a movement uh, is what it has it it has an organization it has uh, ideologies there is a leader there is aim and certain objectives behind it right so similarly women's movement also have a certain organization they have been they have they had certain ideologies uh, certain issues various leaders were there then various aims and objectives were there on which uh, those movement have been fought and why this movement are important why move, women women's movement uh, you know is important so these were important because it brought changes on the public issues it brought changes 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 on the public platform certain rights certain privileges have been demanded and that is why when 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 they have been granted by the government or by the state it brought changes on the public platform right so uh, that is what a movement is actually an organized effort by a group of people either to bring or resist change for example sati pratha in uh, in uh, during socio religious phase uh, you know during ancient in 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 early uh, british period you can say or early modern period so uh, the sati pratha was abolished you know so the sati pratha sati was prevalent in our indian society and it was very strongly entrenched it was very difficult for raja ram mohan roy to to fight for sati pratha because it was backed by your religious understanding and it is very difficult to break your religious understanding any issue which is associated with religion you know it is very 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 important to break for example the issue of menstruation related with girls it has been associated with it is very much a biological issue right it is it's a it's a very much a biological process that every month a girl uh, menstruates right but it is associated with religion it is associated with religious practices that a girl cannot worship that day or a girl cannot go to the kitchen so various you know myths are being associated with this particular a very simple biological process you know so when a, when religion gets associated with any social issue it is very difficult to get changed why because there is a lot of support for it so when sati pratha was abolished raja ram mohan roy has struggled for it has fought for it you know for that he has to bear so much of burnt of the society as well right so he also he also organized a kind of movement you know and that movement ha had a, a, an important issue you know to to bring change in the society to bring a religious understand to bring a change in the religious understanding you know so either to bring or resist change in the society so that is what is uh, what is actually the effort of a group of people so <clears throat> when we talk about uh, now when i am talking about women's movement then uh, here i would also uh, make one um, uh, uh, a difference in the understanding that uh, let's understand it in two ways one in indian way indian understanding towards women's movement that will be talking about in various phases of the social religious movement uh, then during independence then post independence then uh, issue based movement then uh, uh, then then 20th century movements right women's movement specifically when i am saying only movement you need to understand i am talking about women's movement because this topic pertains to women so and when i am talking about at uh, you know at uh, world forum you know when i am talking uh, in uh, in larger context not only to in to the context of india then there has been waves of feminism 
right? Feminism. Now, it actually, you have to understand that feminism is what? You know, many people say that, are you a feminist? Everybody has to be a feminist. Don't take this word feminist in a negative way. They, a feminist uh, um, may or may not be against men. Why I'm saying may or may not be? That it's, you know, you cannot, one cannot bring change in society by posing one person, uh, one person at the cost of another or by posing one section of society at the cost of another. What does, I, what does it mean? What do I mean to say? I mean to say that you cannot bring equality or equity in society by, you know, uh, by criticizing men all the time. You know? Why? Because uh, all are complementary to each other. You know, men and women, both are complementary to each other, you know, and both are important for the society. Right. So never perceive that when you when you are a feminist, you are against men. No, a feminist. Why I'm saying feminist can be pro men or pro, uh, against men because the movement of feminism has certain waves. Waves means phases. First wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave. Now there are n number of waves. Since the women's issue have actually started with uh, with issue based you know, with, um, uh, uh, with certain issues, uh, different, different issues have been taken up uh, in various phases of movement, women's movement. That is why it is called as waves. So waves of feminism is important to understand. There has been largely, you know, four waves of feminism is largely understood these days. Now, uh, otherwise, first wave, second wave, and third wave. So first wave of feminism actually started in early 19th century. It has started, you can say that, you know, for example, French Revolution, not example, it's important point. French Revolution has, you know, it's, it's very important and everybody know, knows it, right? French Revolution, which actually talked about fraternity, liberty, equality, right? It talked about fraternity, equality, liberty, voting rights, so on and so forth. But French Revolution has never ever talked about women's right, women's role, women's right to vote, it has not talked about women's liberation. It has not talked about women's fraternity, liberty, equality. So from there, you know, the issues started coming up and a, a, a very important feminist, you know, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, Mary Wollstonecraft has actually um, during uh, 18th century England, from um, England, Mary Wollstonecraft, very important person and a personality in women's movement. So she actually talked about vindication of rights of women. She, she actually took up the issue of suffrage, suffrage giving you right to vote, because right to vote was also very limited. It was not given to women, or even if it was given to women, it was given on various issue based, various um, you know factors uh, decided actually uh, that whether you belong to this class, you have so much of earning or not, you have land right or not, so on and so forth. But actually, women were not given voting right. So the first wave of women, uh, first wave of feminism actually, it talked about uh, the issue was suffrage. You know, voting rights were being demanded by women. They started demanding their voting right that we should also be given right to vote because we are also the citizen of the society. We are also the citizen of this particular state. So why are we not allowed to give vote, right? So first wave of women, the issue was voting rights, suffrage. Then the second um, wave of feminism actually talked about land rights. You know, land rights, that we economic rights, equal pay for equal work, right? Because many women laborers, laborers actually used to work in industry, but they were not being paid equally. So they demanded in the second wave of feminism, women started demanding their economic right, their land right, right? And in the say, and in the third wave of feminism, uh, women started actually projecting that there is not just a single color or, or, or a single understanding of women or a u universal understanding of women, you know, that women are um, that based on race, you can say that white women or the issues of white women. They started, the third wave of feminism actually started about uh, talking about various phase of women or black women started talking about their rights. Women, 
black women, you know. So they also started talking about uh, their rights. They also started demanding their rights. So it was a, a kind of against the uh, uh, against the racism or or uh, white women, right? Similarly, there are there have been waves of feminism, but first, second, and third uh, waves of feminism is equally important to understand. So why I said that some fem some feminists may or may not agree to, uh, or may or may not uh, be pro-men or uh, pro-men, right? Why? Because now there have been different phases of feminism. Some are liberal feminists, some are uh, uh, Marxist, so the point here we need to understand, we need to uh, you know, uh, change the perspective towards this particular term feminist, that feminist feminism actually talks about uh, the marginalized section of the society. You know, they are talking about the marginalized section of the society, the invisibility of any particular section of the society. So it never talks about that you know, one has to rise uh, at the cost of another. No, it's not that. So that is why I never uh, take the term fem feminist as a negative connotation. So this was actually I was talking about in the international context in the world uh, at the World Forum, right? The waves of feminism. Now, when we talk about in the context of our society, Indian society, it can be divided into various phases. That is socio-religious movement, the rules of women or the issues of women which have been taken up. Then during independence, how women actually fought during independence, how, what was their role? And then after post-independence, how women started participating in parliamentary processes, how women actually started um, putting up the women's issue at the public forum platform. Then um, uh, issue-based movement of 1990s, that what were the issues of women, for example, rape, custody, such was the issues of women, uh, uh, issues that were, that were important in, uh, in 1980s, right, or 90, uh, early 1990s. Then 21st century you know, issues, gender justice, you know, gender just laws, issues of divorce, domestic violence, these issues started coming up. So in this way, we understand the different phases of women's. For example, the first one, social religious movement, Brahmo Samaj, which was founded by Raja Ramon Roy, it also took up the... So the point here is that Raja Ramon Roy being a man, he took the issues of women, right? So he talked, he fought for various issues of women. Similarly, Prarthana Samaj, M.G. Ranade and others, they actually, uh, similar to Brahmo Samaj, they started taking up various issues of women, right? Here, a very important personality, Jyotiba Phule. It's very important to understand Jyotiba Phule and Savitri Bhai Phule. Savitri Bhai Phule, you can say the first woman educationist, first woman educationist who actually started advocating for women's education. And she struggled. She uh, tried to open schools in Maharashtra also. So Jyotiba Phule and Savitri Bhai Phule role is very, very significant. Similarly, role of Arya Samaj, which actually talks about uh, revivalist, which is called as revivalist movement, back to Vedas by Diana and Saraswati. They also uh, took up the issues of child marriage, remarriage of child, child widows, so on and so forth, right? But the weakness of such movement was that, that it actually never demanded gender equality. It took up certain issues, right? And uh, those issues were actually taken up by men and their perspective was also very, very limited, right? There was not very open. Now, during independence, many women participated in women's movement. They supported Gandhi's movement, right? And uh, you can say that Sarojini Naidu, who actually, who later became uh, first woman president of Congress, she actually participated uh, uh, too much into, in various, uh, in, in, the, in the nationalist movement. And uh, further in 1913, because of, uh, you know, their, uh, uh, roles in 1913 uh, in Karachi session of INC, Declaration on Fundamental Right was being made and uh, various uh, uh, issues were taken, women's issues were also being taken up. So uh, uh, this was Karachi session in 1913. Similarly, another example of when you substantiate the role of women during independence is in, in civil disobedience movement, Swadeshi movement, women participated. They started wearing khadi. They started wearing khadi sari, and they 
participated in Swadeshi movement as well. And uh, similarly, uh, when you substantiate your um, uh, point here, then the roles of Lakshmi Sahigal, Kalpana, that Rani Gedelu, the uh, uh, daughter of hills, were, she was called as daughter of hills by um, Pandit Nehru. So Jawaharlal Nehru, so um, uh, her role was also very, very significant. Similarly, Kalpana Dutt, her role was also uh, very significant. And uh, there were also, uh, there were other uh, uh, women uh, revolutionaries, for example, um, the one who was actually running the underground uh, um, uh, radio and uh, similarly uh, Kalpana Dutt who was actually um, in Indian army and um, uh, they were into Chintagong armory raids, so on and so forth. They were so courageous and they bravely fought for our independence, right? So the point is that from where such a spirit and the strength was coming, it was actually coming from Western suffragettes. As I took the name of Mary Wollstone, Wollstonecraft, so there were many Western suffragettes, Western feminist movement and liberation movement, and from there they draw their spirit, right? So. Uh, they, without their contribution, we couldn't have gained our freedom. So their contribution cannot be ignored, right? Now, um, next uh, phase comes uh, is uh, institutional initi initiatives in post-independence uh, period. But before that, I would uh, here like to mention that, uh, you know, the, uh, in, in, the, in the phases also, uh, during independence and uh, post-independence when I talk about, then there have been various uh, um, uh, significant uh, issues which have been taken up by women post-independence. So post-independence that women started participating in parliamentary process, they started becoming parliamentarian, they started bringing up issues at the, uh, at the level of um, uh, public platform, and they started bringing change. And because of their advocacy, various government policies and programs have been framed. And um, in, uh, uh, in early 90s and 80s, other important issues were the issues of women, that is, the issues of divorce, rape, domestic violence, so on and so forth, right? And similarly, 21st century, if we see, we see the, we talk about gender equality, we talk about breaking glass ceiling. Glass ceiling is like, you know, for example, when you go for uh, go for some job or interview, when, when you are being asked that you, whether you are married or not, or if you're married, whether you're having a child or not. So, and on the basis of that, um, you know, you are not being given uh, due promotion or you are not being given due, um, uh, due job which you want. So this is a kind of glass ceiling, a ceiling, uh, a barrier is there which you are not able to see, you know. So a glass ceiling. So these days now the issues are of breaking, bringing gender equality, breaking glass ceiling, uh, um, equal pay for equal work understanding the load of women, the, that women are double burdened. Double burden means women are working in the public platform, but at the same time, they are looking after their houses. Household work is also associated with them. So double burden concept, so on and so forth, right? <clears throat> now the institutional initiatives in post-independence, you can quickly go through this, that's Sati Prevention, then Criminal Amendment to Criminal Act, Hindu Succession Act, very important, 1956, which actually gave equal share to daughter from the property of their father, Immoral Trafficking uh, Act 1986, similarly Dowry Prohibition Maternity Benefit Act 1961, in which various changes have been made. It was a news recently also, Domestic Violence and 73rd and 74th Amendment Act, which actually gave one third seat in the local bodies to women, women panchayat, municipalities, you know. So the, the uh, side effect of 73rd, 74th, I would also say that uh, women were at the forefront, but actually the, um, they were being, they were the mouthpiece of their, uh, either their husband or their brother. This question is also being asked many a times, so, but it is very, very significant. This is a very sig significant and revolutionary step that's in 73rd, 74th Amendment Act. One third seats were, uh, is actually reserved for women in panchayat and municipalities. Similarly, these are the constitutional provision 
Article 14, 15, 23, Article 39, which talks about the equality, equal uh, right to win, right, equal right of uh, right to means of livelihood for women. And um, Article 51, then Article um, 42, this all talks about ensuring just and humane condition for women and their and maternity to leave. So these are important constitutional provisions, right? So uh, issue-based movement earlier in 1970s, they gained uh, momentum again in 80s or 90s with dowry movement, anti-rape movement, right? And environment-based movement also. With this, with that, we um, uh, recently, or we uh, uh, largely hear the term uh, Chipko movement or, or eco-feminism. So Chipko movement, 73, 74, very important uh, role of Gora Devi, you know, the, that women who actually uh, 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 fought for uh, the forest, you know, and she protected uh, the uh, the felling of the trees. The co the contractor were trying to enter in the inside the forest and trying to cut the trees. So they hugged the tree, and that is why it is called as Chipko movement. Similarly, there were various other movements also. Women participated, or they uh, pro actually uh, protested for. Uh, uh, advocated for ban of liquor in Andhra Pradesh, in Bihar. Another uh, important term, ecofeminism, which I've already talked about. So there are various other feminists also who are uh, taking up the issues of environment, protection of environment, conservation of environment. Vandana Shiva, Medha Patikar, Narmada Bachao Andolan, she's associated with Medha Patikar, Gaura Devi, or recently Greta Thunberg, uh, adolescent child, you know, from Sweden, who actually gave such a marvelous speech, and she is again an environmental activist. So, in uh, 21st century movement, um, Me Too movement were very, very important. Were uh, actually an eye opener in which many <laughs> important personalities have been actually, you know, their uh, uh, deeds were being quite openly uh, talked about. So very important. So now, what are the indicators of women's status in India? Obviously, female feticide, infanticides, what is the rate of it? Important to understand. Rape, sexual harassment, abuse, domestic violence, dowry deaths. The more these are on parameter, the more uh, demeaning status of women. You know, objectification of women, for example, how women are projected on uh, television, in various ads, it is important to understand how um, they are being projected in media, uh, print, me print, and me print media and media, then literature, it is important to understand. Demographic profile of women is important to understand uh, that uh, what is the percentage, what is the, uh, their health status, for example, it's still 2% of female uh, population is absolute anemic. You know, if you visit a rural area, uh, still the women are struggling for their um, uh, good health condition, right? Similarly, literacy rate, what is their literacy rate? Um, ILO's uh, uh, um, women's labor participation, uh, women's participation in labor force, these data are important. What is the workforce participation of women? So largely 87% of women are employed in agriculture, still women in pub, in, uh, in paid domain, formal paid domain, there are still very few, the percentage is less. And even during now, this situation is aggravated during COVID times that the women are struggling a lot, you know, uh, for their economic rights. The women are now bearing, you know, they're working at home and they're bearing the burnt of um, the family work. Many of them are also going through domestic violence. The domestic violence rate has also increased, right? So women's employment and program schemes, gender budgeting, which was introduced in 2005, six, um, uh, it, is, it is actually the gender budgeting is not accounting, rather including gender perspective in, in the budget. That is what is gender budgeting. So um, working women hostel were being opened. Those women who are working, they can stay in those hostel. There have been various uh, supports um, uh, for women to get employed. Now let's understand international convention for women, you know, CEDAW. So there are certain international conventions which we need to 
uh, understand uh, that is CEDAW 1979, then Beijing Declaration, then Beijing Plus 20, the role of SDG, COP 21, right? So these are uh, important to un understand. Now, International Convention CEDAW 1979, it is actually Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women in 1979 by UN General Assembly. In lieu of that, Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action 1995, it is very, very important for advancing women's rights. And uh, uh, Beijing Plus 20, which actually uh, was uh, to review the Beijing Declaration along with Sustainable Development Goals. Sustainable um, Development Goals 4 and 5 talks about education, 4 talks about education and 5 talks about women's right, bringing women's equality in the, uh, in the country. Then COP21 also, women's participation in climate, uh, uh, climate control and climate change is very important. So their participation in order to control the climate change is important, right? So it is important uh, uh, that women account for 47.7% of global workforce. You know, now, how do we conclude? Now, what we have to conclude, you know, um, a very important, um, I, I must mention here the name of Shramila Regi, you know, very important uh, personality in women's movement again, or, or, or a feminist, I would say that she has actually talked about, um, you know, the, the, matria, the matrilineal societies of Northeastern states. And through that, how she has actually, you know, talked about that the, the dominance of uh, uh, men there also in that society. And she has talked about Dalit women, issues of Dalit women, and uh, and the various issues she has also talked about. Now, uh, so these names are important to understand also in present context. You know, similarly, uh, the roles of various uh, women activists these days are important uh, to uh, mention and to understand that how they are advocating the, uh, the invisibility of women and they are advocating towards the uh, upliftment of women and uh, women in the society. And until, and this will only bring empowerment, you know, the empowerment, the term empowerment, uh, which we can take, uh, will take up in next, another class, uh, when we'll be taking up uh, various uh, programs and initiatives of government. So empowerment cannot come without, uh, you know, change in the perspective, change in the perspective of, uh, of everybody in the society. You know, perspective means you have to understand that nobody is subjugated to the other section, right? And, uh, and, and the role and the, uh, 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 the role of women in society right from historical period is important to understand. You know, uh, so th this invisibility of women can only be be can only be removed from the society when we change our perspective, and as well as when we change the perspective, the various government initiatives are being also in lieu of that, right? So this understanding has to be changed in order to bring change in the society. So this was largely the uh, your uh, a very important topic, a very important uh, uh, you know section of Indian society. That is a role of women and women's organization. So I hope you must have understood clearly. So with this, I'll end your meeting here and hope to take another class soon. Thank you.